always happy to be here with Gregory Vahanian. Um, just a joy to talk with you, Gregory. Uh, and today, um, I want to particularly uh, celebrate that your your book just recently, I mean, this month was published. And so we'll talk about um, the, the the journey to creating the book, but also the book's contents itself. And uh, yeah, your experience of, of, you know, writing it, publishing it, and, and what it's like now. Um, but for those who, uh, just a little bit of context, Gregory is part of my ABC client group and also a helper in the program. So um, has been just a wonderful presence in the group for so many people. Uh, Gregory, I'm going to let you practice your introduction as we do around these parts, and then we'll get into talking about the book, et cetera. Thank you, George. Always a treat to see you. Yeah. So I'm Gregory Bahani, and I'm a transformational life coach, and I support individuals, couples, and groups in enjoying a more healing and empowering orientation to life, uh, which is really cultivated from the inside out. Nice. And yeah, we'll talk about that as we get into the contents of your book. What does that mean to have a healing orientation and inside out? So um, first of all, congratulations. It's uh, a lot of people, I think a lot of people watching this um, are either aspiring, like they want to write a book one day, uh, or the second group is uh, are the people who have started writing a book and, you know, still working on it or set it down and haven't picked it back up. Uh, so you could speak to both of those groups. And of course there are others who congratulations to all of you who have actually published the book. And yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, start with the journey of your experience of writing and publishing the book. And then, um, and then let's get into the book's contents as well. Yeah. Sure. And I'll add to my intro to, to my introduction and, and as part of because it, it comes forward in part of my responding to this, that one of the areas of specialization that I, is supporting people in bringing projects that have heart, like a book or a record, you know, songs, uh, poet, what, whatever. Somebody has a, a project that has heart that they've been intending and for some reason haven't gotten traction with. That's one of my areas of specialization is to support folks in actually bringing it from concept and inspiration actually into completion and delivery. It's beautiful. And yeah, exactly. And you you're you're walking your your talk. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so in response to, to that, what I recognize, you know, I'm I was just chatting with someone yesterday um, about this idea. I, I as George you know, I have a master's in spiritual psychology and uh, one of the things, and then, and then there were advanced programs after, after that. And one of the things with fellow coaches um, studying uh, soul centered coaching that we talk about, and this is not exclusive to this group of people, but to anybody who's coaching, really, we are our own first client. <laughs> you know, it's like we, we, I, and I would imagine it holds for most fields, you know, we, where there are, is a service consciousness, a service provider, we, we discover areas that we have challenging territory with, we discover some solutions, how to navigate that territory. And just like when we see a good movie and we want to turn people on to it, it seems it's a natural thing to go, oh, I'm not the only one who gets stuck around this territory. Maybe I can support other other folks. So with with the with the book, um, I'll say one of the things that for me was a huge game changer because I've had different books come forward in my consciousness as things I'd like to share about over the years where I haven't moved on it. I haven't engaged, but I discovered this uh, wonderful uh, authentic marketing coach. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear what's coming up next because if, you know, I'm, 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 I'm eager to learn from that person myself. Yeah, Please yeah, yeah. Ahead. You should see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, I'll give you his contact information. Thank you. Uh, I, I, one of the sort of foundational, it's really present with me today. Like as we were coming into the meet, I was like, boy, this is, the, this is really where it's at in terms of 
everything to me, which is in the three stages of authentic content creation that you teach and model, uh, speaking of being one's own first client, you model all of this. Um, the, the sort of primary thing, which is very spiritual psychology for, for me, is approaching writing of blogs or creating of vlogs as an iterative process so that the stage one is shared with a very light touch. It's like, this is something, whether one is a therapist or a coach or a, a horse trainer or whatever the thing is, ooh, this is, this is something that I really find useful when I'm working in the corral or whatever the thing is. And I would imagine that other horse trainers will find this useful, you know, whatever the territory is, but then approaching it really with a light touch as distinct from what I think a lot of writers, my impression is a lot of people who have a creative sensibility and get is that perfectionistic part that wants to get to the end before taking that um, proverbial first step. The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And you hold such a welcoming, honoring space for the wisdom of just take a first step and and do it and do it lightly. Because even if we take that first step, I've never heard you articulate it exactly this way, but it's implicit in what you model. Even if we take that first step, once we, you know, a, a light touch stage one piece of content, we're going to get feedback from our universe. Some people are going to be enthusiastic. There's going to be a lot of responses. Maybe there's going to be no responses. But whatever that feedback from our universe is, it's just information. It doesn't mean we're brilliant. It doesn't mean we're stupid. It doesn't mean we have anything to do with worthiness. It's just information in terms of what people may have an appetite for. And, and then from that, we can course correct and, and engage with our next step, whether we want to explore the same subject from another angle or how. So this whole notion of being of it being an iterative process that can be refined to me speaks to something sort of a cornerstone principle in spiritual psychology, which is approaching life with a learning orientation. And as soon as I move into the questions about what's the lesson in this, what's the learning available here, then I get out of my way and I start having fun. Ah, beautifully said. Wow. I love the, um, yeah, you, you're, de you're developed, you're sharing concepts that our, our heart knows, or our, our, perhaps our higher self knows. And we forget all the time um, because we see other people's results, perhaps. I mean, even some of you watching this, I'm like, oh, Gregory wrote a book. Wow. Okay. That's, you know, got to work hard to write my book or whatever. <laughs> and, and so maybe, uh, Gregory, you could tell us a bit, um, how do you, how do you, the way you wrote your book, how might it be different um, than what the traditional notion of book writing? Let me take a few years off, you know, <laughs> let me take a year off or some people, you know, do, do it fast. Let me take a month off or whatever. And they're like working hard and like they're writing from, you know, morning to night. And then, um, you know, and then they have to go through weeks or months of editing and, and like, how do you, how, how is it different? How is it different than, than what? Yeah. Share anything about that. You like, you like. Yeah. I would, thanks. And uh, I would, I would, would like to share about that. I, I want to add one more piece that comes forward in what we're talking about, which is that it's really our ego, our our mental and emotional conditioned self that in, gets involved in the perfectionistic sort of things that can stop us. But our heart or our soul, in my experience, is just seeking expression and experience. And it's seeking expansion to, to discover you know, and so uh, anyhow, that that 
And I, th I feel like one of the reasons I so vibe with you, why so many people I believe vibe with you is because you hold a very in, in, inviting, gracious, hospitable space, George, for folks to honor what is authentic, which to me means what is coming from the heart, what is sincere in intention, what is what is honorable and true in terms of our highest, you know, in, intentions for for sharing and being a blessing in people's lives, and uh, and so yeah, so so you invite authentic expression. The for for me the the process modeled in the blog to book uh, course, which which I I. I'm still taking in my consciousness. Yeah. You know, I, I took it a year ago, but I'm still leveraging the recording. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, it's a, uh, those who don't know, you know, it's, um, it's, I did teach this course and uh, Gregory not only took it, but applied it. And and here we are, right? With the, with the book, but, but yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I, I saw you go into it like step by step, which is really um, inspiring. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and and so so for me, the the process was very organic and very light and very pleasurable, because basically, um, I, rather than coming from a mental level, sort of strategizing or trying to figure out what the plot points or the structure or any of those things up front, rather than all of those things that I've attempted once or twice before, you know, to map out. Uh, but the truth is my heart, my, my, my experience is my heart knows what's present in the now, in the moment. And it is, is, is not strategic in that way. So my writing process was basically me showing up three to five times a week, check, with a commitment to either do a video or an article on whatever was present with me that I was either navigating or that I was reflecting on as being really valuable to me in, in terms of negotiating life and uh, my, whether it was my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my work, whatever the particular thing was. I did that for a year. Uh, with with videos and, and articles and uh, Instagram carousels. And then I went back in and I started to catalog or categorize the different themes. I, I placed them in different categories. And I realized that thematically, there were three different categories. Each one could be its own book. This happens to be the first book. And and the book, since we, we've mentioned my book and we're celebrating, you know, this as a reference point, uh, is called Accessing the Wisdom of the Heart, Reflections on Awakening. And uh, I think it's a it's appropriate that it's the first book because it's largely uh, setting the tone for what I believe to be, at least for me, and it seems to serve the folks that I work with. Uh, our primary business, which is our inner, our inner territory, and and as uh, Ron and Mary Holnick say, doctors Ron and Mary Holnick say, uh, the issue, the things that disturb us or are challenging for us, the things that disturb our peace, are never the issue. The issue is how we're going to relate to ourselves and our circumstances while we go through the issue. That's the issue and yeah yeah oh, beautiful beautifully said man um what and one of the one of the uh gifts in the book i love this is that at the end of each chapter readers can click on a link especially those of you who are reading this on kindle and um you know there's going to be a paperback version as well and and um uh paperback readers can 
just go to the link. Um, paperback's not out yet as of this recording. No, but, it'll be about yeah. two and a half months out. Yeah, 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 exactly. So anyway, whenever you're listening to this, you can go to the end of any of the chapters in the book and go to that link and get a video um, supplement to that chapter. And if you have been enjoying the way that Gregory shows up, your energy signature, Gregory, um, if you've been enjoying the way that Gregory shares um, heart and advice, you're going to love this because every every chapter has that has that gift um, that's you know you can access. And so uh, so Gregory, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot in the book, um, and readers will enjoy a lot of it. You tell amazing, um, just like simple and um, meaningful, heartfelt stories that, that um, you know, educate about particular concepts, uh, help the reader reflect on their own life at the end of each chapter. In fact, there are reflection questions that for, for the reader. Um, are there any, you know, out of the several dozen um, uh, principles and stories in the book, are there like, is there like one or two, maybe maybe one for now, actually, is there one uh, that that is, particularly something you want to share today in this in this call. Sure, thanks. There's a couple that come to mind, but I'll, I'll share one and see where we are. Um, now, and I appreciate the, the framing, the introduction of, of that, and would like to add one piece to that as I, before I share the, the example. The, the book is called, as I mentioned, uh, Accessing the Wisdom of the Heart, Reflections on Awakening. And I, in my coaching and in the, my workshops and in the book, I don't kid myself uh, that the gold is, is in me as the coach. Hopefully I bring value as the coach, but what I'm grateful for as an opportunity in anything that I do is holding an invitation for the reader or the workshop participant or the client to discover the real gold. And the real gold is to be found in the wisdom of the reader's heart. And so that's why uh, I introduce a theme, we explore a particular way of dropping beyond the limitations of uh, compensatory strategies that we may have developed as a kid that can be really limiting and into the expanse as the image on the book cover shows, the expanse of our heart's wisdom. And one of one story that comes forward for me in this moment that I share in the book, um, smiling because I always marvel. My wife is such a, she demonstrates so much mastery on so many levels, uh, has an unbelievably uh, generous service consciousness that, she models and when we we've been in december it'll be 25 years of our being together yeah yeah i'm very great congratulations that is wow and yeah mo modeling this right is thank you yeah yeah thank you thank you and uh and in the first year that we were together occasionally i'd noticed that she was triggered about something not you know blowing up or uh, but I'm, I'm sensitive, I watch and listen, and I could see a little contraction, a little something in the eyes that would suggest that something just disturbed her. But she wouldn't, she wouldn't say, for example, hey, what the, and I need to talk. And she, she would be very like gracious and gentle. And unlike she, you, I mean, that, that's how you're- Unlike reacting. me, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, both of my parents were psychotherapists and, and I, I don't think I've ever shared that with you, but they were, mm. and I was kind of taught that when there are issues, one talks them through. Mm. And, and oftentimes that's very valuable to, to talk things through. But she had this other like sort of mystical alchemical skill that I'd never experienced in anyone before, which is I'd see that little bit of a something. And then she would say, I just need a few minutes. And she'd leave the room. She'd come back five minutes later and it wasn't like she went in the room 
and then said, oh, I'm going to show him. I'm going to really get like she'd come back and she was in her heart and she was complete. And and I could tell she was neutral. And I would ask her, are you are you OK? Do you do you do you need to do you need do we need to talk about it? And she would say, no, I'm, I'm good. And she was genuinely good. And the thoroughfare of loving flow heart to heart between us had been restored. Whatever, whatever momentary disturbance might have obstructed her ability to be present and in her loving with me was restored. And at first, I just kind of scratched my head and marveled. And after, I don't know, six, eight months, I finally said, what do you do when you go out of the room? What, what do you know that I don't know? I want to learn because that's amazing to me. It, it is you, like more, more humans need to do that. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, well, and, and me. And so she began to introduce me to a practice that she had started learning as a child at age 11 in a spiritual community that she grew up in. She, she started to teach me about self-forgiveness. I had never heard of self-forgiveness. I'd never heard the notion of self I understood the idea of forgiveness. I always understood forgiveness was a good thing. I never quite understood how, how in a sort of meat and potatoes or a tofu and, you know, for the vegans. Tofu uh, and kale, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, exactly. Um, how, like in a very practical way, how to work with forgiveness. I had had an I had had at that point eight to ten years of therapy. So I I had had forgiveness. I had brought compassion to different parts and I had grieved losses and so on. But I didn't really know on my own how to and uh to reference a Rumi quote, Rumi says, um something to the effect, uh may not be word for word, but it's something to the effect of your task is not to uh, search the world or seek the world for love, but rather to seek within and identify the barriers that you've placed against it. Wow. And, and uh, in spiritual psychology, we're taught that, that quote and the, the, with the addition, and then dissolve them, meaning dissolve the barriers. And the barriers, in essence, are the judgments that we place. When we're running, <clears throat> when we're running uh, some, I, whether it's about ourselves, another, a circumstance, God, the universe, where we're running, things shouldn't be this way, or, or it was supposed to be different, or maybe it's pejorative language that shows up. Oh, she's such a, or he's such a, or they're such, whatever the th thing is. If we can identify in our upset, in our humanness, in our ego's conditioning, identify what's the language that I'm running inside on a mental level, it's a key to unlock our greater freedom. I like to think of it as when we we're triggered or we're upset, like the da dashboard of a car and the brake light comes out, I don't curse the car. I go, oh, that's valuable information. Now I need to look under the hood, take it into a mechanic and or fix the, what the address the oil. So if I'm feeling angry or irritated or so on, to me, it's the dashboard coming on. Most of us, the way our ego is set up, we're conditioned, trained, and our ego is trying to keep us safe to manage the trigger. So most of us spend our time trying to teach people how to behave with us or, or perhaps express reactive or destructive reactivity as thinking, if I can just vent, they'll know how hurtful and then they'll but it just kind of perpetuates a cycle of judgment. So what I've been taught and, and what my wife modeled for me is rather than as tempting as it is to go to the trigger, to say, ah, 
my peace is disturbed. How metaphorically, as my wife did literally, can I excuse myself for a few minutes and take some time looking at what's going on inside under the hood of my own consciousness and then extend compassion and empathy to what are oftentimes much younger parts that are, are, are feeling unsafe or hurt or violated or whatever the thing might be and and then giving them a voice and then oh extending forgiveness i had a, a pastor once talk about years ago when we forgive we're giving up one thing in favor of another that's forgiveness and really what we're doing in my experience is we're giving up our condemnation or our judgment in favor of returning to our innate well-being, loving, joy, and the peace that's available right underneath the anger and the hurt, which is that, that loving foundation, which is the essence, in my experience, of all of us. Mm. Oh, it's worth uh, rewinding, folks, and, and, and uh, listening to that again. Wow. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. And thanks to your wife for, you know, sharing that with you and with us, essentially. Um, there's a lot more in the book. I hope folks will, uh, if you're inspired by this, you got to check it out, get the book. Um, and like I said, there are, there's a video um, at the end of each chapter you should check out uh, as, as well. Gregory, thank you so much uh, for the, for the presence, um, the loving and wise energy you bring into the community, um, wherever you are, uh, wherever you show up in, in you know, my, my courses or sessions or groups or, or just on you know, social media, people are lucky to have you there. Um, yeah, thank you. I, be sure, I will be sure to put the link to your book and your website below. Um, anything else you want to say to the, uh, to, the, to the folks here watching as we conclude? Yeah, I, I think, th first of all, thank you so much, George. Uh, as always, uh, you know, I feel so, you're, you're such a gracious, uh, hospitable host in, in every uh, interchange. And so I'm just, I'm just grateful. Thank you. And, and I would say, uh, as a sort of a com completion to our, our get together as a message, if you are, in the entertaining stages of of considering or leaning into or if you've worked on something before it's really doable it's really accessible and and uh to reiterate what i said at the beginning uh that i learned at usm in spiritual psychology the value of having a learning orientation as a fundamental approach to life and then what George models in, in having an iterative process, approaching things with a light touch, just even sometimes I find myself even in the publishing because I'm still learning as I'm going through, you know, the Kindle's now up and then I'll be publishing the, the paperback. Even the publishing, for me, I've had to remind myself as there have been some little things, corrections to be made, I have to go, it's an iterative process. It's, it's okay for it not to be perfect. In fact, it would be mighty surprising if it all was perfect. So, so I just, in, I would invite you, you know, if you're watching this, if you're a content creator, a solopreneur, to give yourself plenty of space for your own humanness, for your own learning process, uh, I'm so I've been so ignorant in so many ways about these things, and I just come show up as a student. And sometimes I feel like I'm learning to tie my shoes, and I've only ever seen Velcro, and I'm kind of overwhelmed. <laughs> and then, but still, I I'm learning. I'm learning, and and the the feedback response and um, early success of the book. Uh, and my experience of feeling encouraged to, to start uh, 
holding space for the next one uh, is a demonstration, at least for me, this is doable. So uh, all, all the best with, with whatever projects you might be bringing forward. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's very encouraging and true. So thank you so much, Gregory, for your book and just the way that you bring uh, your nurturing energy to others. Thank you, George. Thanks.